So this video is for integrated two. This is the chapter 12 homework one fundamental counting principle. Um, you go to the snack bar to buy a bagel and a drink for lunch. You can choose from a plain bagel, a blueberry bagel, or a raisin bagel. Let me just highlight that. So plain bagel, blueberry bagel, or a raisin bagel. Um, the choices of a drink include water or sports drink. How many different lunches can be made with these choices? So I am going to do a um, decision chart. And so basically we have our choices for bagel and our choices for a drink. And for our bagel, we have three different choices. Times for our drink, we have two different choices. So total, there's gonna be six different um, meals, lunches that we can have. On um, number two, a men's department store sells three different suit jackets, six different shirts. Okay, so we've got six, uh, three different suit jackets, um, six different shirts, eight different ties, and four different pairs of pants. How many different suits consisting of a jacket, shirt, tie, and pants are possible? So again, we're gonna do a decision chart. So we have jackets, um, we have shirts. So I'll just put jacket, shirt, um, ties, and pants. And we have three different jackets times um, six different shirts times eight different ties times four different pairs of pants. And when we multiply that together, three times six times, oops, let me get over here, sorry. Three times six times eight times four, 576 different outfits. Um, the math department is selecting two new officers. Okay, there are three candidates for president. Okay, so we have three candidates for president, four candidates for vice president, um, four candidates for secretary and two candidates for treasurer. How many different um, combinations are possible? Okay, so we've got, um, I'm going to put P, oh, well, I'll put, this, I'll put Prez, um, VP, vice president, secretary, and Treasure. Okay. So for um, the president, there's three different ways to get the president, four different choices for the vice president, um, four different choices for the secretary, and two different choices for the VP, I mean, for the treasurer. And so I'm going to have three times four times four times two, or 96 possible combinations. How many different five digit zip codes are possible if the digits can be repeated? Okay, so they can be repeated and this one they can not be repeated. Okay, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five different choices. And when we're dealing with this, um, we can have, so it's a five digit. And so the digits are basically zero through nine, which means there's 10 choices each time. So it's gonna be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 to the 
fifth or one with five zeros. So 100,000 different ways. Now, if we cannot have repetition, it's gonna be 10 and then nine and then eight and then seven and then six. So a couple ways that I could compute this, okay? I can go 10 times nine times eight times seven times six and get 30,240. Um, so 30,240. Or another way to think about this is this is almost 10 factorial, but we're missing five on. So another way to think about this, and I'm gonna kind of zoom in right here and I'm gonna write it here. You can think of it as 10 factorial and then I am missing five factorial. Five, four, three, two, one is missing from it. So instead I can go 10 factorial divided by five factorial and you see I got the same answer. So that's another way of typing it in where you don't have to type in a whole bunch of numbers, but you're gonna get the same answer. Okay, um, on number six, how many different seven digit phone numbers are possible if no phone number may begin with a zero? Okay, so I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there is a little bit of a restriction. Okay, um, no phone number can begin with a zero. So again, there's the number zero through nine, but we cannot have zero as our first choice. So um, basically, again, zero to nine is really 10 digits, but we cannot have zero. So what that means is since this is no zero, I only have nine choices, one through nine. Now it's not saying we can't repeat. So at this point I can have all 10, all 10, all 10, all 10 for the rest of these. So I'm gonna have nine times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six, which is gonna be nine with six zeros. One, two, three, one, two, three. So 9 million different um, phone numbers. Now, suppose you are dealt two cards from a standard deck of 52 cards. How many different outcomes are possible? So this is for our first pick, and then this is for our second pick. So if we're picking from the cards, there's 52 ways to get the first one. But unless I put that back, but it, it says you're dealt two cards. So you're dealt one and you're dealt another. We're not putting it back. That means there's going to be 51. So we're going to do 52 times 51, which is 2,652. So 2,652. Um, now, on eight, a baseball manager is determining the batting order for the team. The team has nine players, but the manager definitely wants the pitcher to bat last. How many batting orders are possible? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one has to be the pitcher. He wants the pitcher last. So there's one way to get the pitcher. Now, if there's one way to get the pitcher to be the last batter, and there's nine people on the team for nine batting positions, then I'm gonna only have eight people left, then seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one. So really this is eight factorial. And again, we have an extra times one, but again, times by one doesn't change anything. So um, for this one, I'm gonna do eight factorial and eight factorial is 40,320. So this is gonna be 40,320. Determine how many different computer passwords are possible if three digits followed by four letters, okay? 
So three digits, one, two, three. So I'm gonna put number, 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 followed by four letters, one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna put letter, 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 letter. And I'm gonna copy this because we're gonna do this again on the next one down here. Okay. Now, in this case, it says that the digits and the letters can be repeated. So when we're talking about the digits, we've got the digits zero through nine. So that's gonna be 10, 10, 10. And then the letters in the alphabet, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So I'm gonna go 26, 26, 26, 26. So basically I have 10 to the third times 26 to the fourth is what I'm going to compute. So we end up with 10 raised to the third times 26 raised to the fourth. So we end up with, um, as our answer, four, five, six, nine. Seven six zero zero zero. So four hundred and fifty six thousand nine hundred and seventy six. So four hundred fifty six million nine hundred seventy six thousand. Um, now the digits cannot be repeated. So now I'm going to have ten, and then nine, and then eight, and then I'm going to have twenty six times twenty five times twenty four times 23. Okay, so you can decide whether you want to type it in that way or work it out with 10 factorial over 7 factorial because that's really 10, 9, 8 times 26 factorial over 22 factorial because I'm missing 22 factorial. Either way, we are going to get the same answer. So let me just clear all here. So we can go 10 times 9 times 8 times 26, 25, 24, 23. And for my answer, I get 258336000. So 2, 258,336,000. Now, again, I could also have done 10 factorial divided by seven factorial um, times um, 26 factorial divided by 22 factorial. And you see that gives me the same answer. Now on number 10, um, two digits followed by five letters. And in the first situation, no repetition, or they can be repeated and the second one cannot be repeated. Okay, so we've got number, number, letter, 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 letter. Okay, just copy this. Okay. So if it can be repeated, it's going to be 10 times 10 in the first one. In the bottom one, when it cannot be repeated, it's going to be 10 and then 9. Now for the letters in the first one, if it can be repeated, it's 26, 26, 26, 26, 26. In the bottom one, it's 26, 25, 24, 23, 22. So we can put it in as we see it, for this top one, I can do 10 squared, which is 100, times 26 to the fifth. And when I put that into my calculator, um, 10 squared, again, which is 100, um, times 26 to the fifth. Um, notice I've got a times 10 to the ninth, so this is gonna be, um, let's see, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just gonna go 
one nine about times 10 to the ninth approximately. Okay, on the next one, um, when I put that into my calculator, and I just, uh, on, on the calculator here, this is the 26th to the fifth, and this is what I get. So if I wanna be a little more accurate so I can compare these, um, this again is 26 to the fifth. When I times it by 100, I'm just gonna be basically adding two zeros. So that is gonna be one, oh, let me get a pen. One, one, eight, eight, one, three, seven, six, and then zero, zero here. Let me write it down here. Okay, so one, one, eight, eight, one, three, seven, six, zero, zero. So one billion one hundred eighty-eight million one hundred thirty-seven thousand six hundred. Okay, now for this one, if I want to put this in my calculator, I can do it as I see it, or I can write ten factorial, and to get ten times nine, I can either go ten factorial or um, times what am I missing eight uh, divided by eight factorial, or just put in ten times nine. That's probably a little easier but I just want you to start understanding this. Um, and then 26 factorial, and then 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, I'm missing 21 factorial. That would give me the same answer. Okay. So um, basically I'm gonna have 90, 10 times nine is 90 times. And I'm just gonna go, um, oops, wanna get a fraction bar. Um, 26 factorial over 21 factorial. And I end up with, for this answer, 7104240000. So I end up with 710,424,000. Okay, on number 11. Um, this one actually is the same one we just did earlier. So we can skip this because we've already done this one. Um, on number 12, how many eight digit numbers can be formed if the leading digit cannot, so eight digit numbers, the leading digit cannot be a zero and the last digit cannot be a one. So leading digit cannot be a zero, last number cannot be a one. And it's eight numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so leading digit cannot be a zero. Okay, so if it cannot be a zero, then that's gonna give us nine choices. And the last number cannot be a one, so that's gonna give us nine choices. They did not say that we can't repeat. So then the rest of them are gonna be 10 for each of these. So I'm gonna have 10 to the six times basically 81. So I'm gonna have 81 with six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 81 million different ways. Um, how many four digit odd numbers? One, two, three, four can be formed if no digit can be repeated. Okay, so first off, if this is gonna be odd, okay, so if this is gonna be odd, that means that the last number here, okay, the last number here can either be a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine. So there's five different ways that we can have this happen. So there's five choices here. Now, we cannot repeat, so that means now, we have um, one less than original, and um, we basically are going to have the number zero, the number zero through nine. So we have ten. Um, then, so actually, I don't have ten. I apologize because we've used one of them. We only have nine, and then eight, and then seven. So I'm going to go. 
Um, nine, whoops, let me get out of this one. So nine times eight times seven times five, and that is going to be 2,520, 2,520. Now, let me say this, since this is supposed to be a four digit number, really truly in this spot right here, we should not have a zero. It should be a number one through nine. So I'm gonna say here, no zero. So what that means is now here, we don't have nine choices. Because we, again, we've already taken one of these. So out of the 10, one's gone. But then if we can't have zero, this is actually going to be an eight. Um, because again, if it's a four digit number, we shouldn't have zero here. This should be a, you know, 1,000 something, 2,000 something, 3,000 something, not a zero in the front. And again, it has to be odd. So let me just double check. So there's five choices for the last. We've used one number, okay? And we shouldn't have a zero here. So out of the 10, we only have eight. Now we've used two numbers. So we have eight and then seven and we have the five. So when I recompute this, I basically have um, 64, eight times eight times 35 and I get 2,000, whoops, 2,240. That's what I would do because again, really you shouldn't have a zero here if it's a four digit number. Otherwise I would make it a three digit number. Um, you are taking a survey on your experience at Taco Bell. For the first five questions, you can answer below average, average or above average. So below average, above average, or average for the first five. Um, the last three, you either agree or disagree. How many outcomes are possible? So for the first five, one, two, three, four, five, we have three ways we can answer each of those. So that's gonna be three to the fifth. And then for the last three questions, we have two choices. So that's going to be two to the third. And if I put that into my calculator, um, I have three to the fourth, which is an 81, times two to the third, which is an eight. And I end up with 648 different ways. Um, number 15, the standard configuration for a California license plate is one number followed by three letters and then three digits. How many different license plates are possible if letters and digits can be repeated? Okay, so we basically have a number and then one, two, three, letter, 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 and then one, two, three, number, number, number. Okay, so here, if it can be repeated. So for the numbers, we're gonna have um, the digits zero through nine, which means you've got 10 choices. You've got 10 choices for each of the digits. And then for the letters, you're gonna have 26 letters. So when I do that math, um, I am going to have 26 to the third um, times 10 to the fourth. And I get for that answer, um, I'm going to write it above here. So I get one, seven, five, seven, six, zero, 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 zero.
So 175,760,000. Now for the next one, when we cannot repeat, okay, so they cannot be repeated, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have 10 for the first digit, then nine, then eight, then seven. Um, we're going to have 26 for the first letter and then 25 and then 24. And again, we can type it in like this, or instead what you can do is for the 10, nine, eight, seven, you can think of that as, let's see if I can scooch it over here as 10 factorial over six factorial because the six, five, four, three, two, one's missing. And then 26 factorial, and then we have 23 on missing. So 23 factorial, either one of these will give us the answer. So um, 10 factorial divided by six factorial times, um, 26 factorial, whoops, factorial um, over 23 factorial. And we end up with 78624000. So 78,624,000. Okay, on 16. From a standard deck of cards, okay, 52 cards. Provided you put the cards back, how many ways can you pick a face card and then a spade? Um, provided you put the cards back. So a face card, I'll put FC for face card and I'll put S for spade. So to pick a face card, a face card is gonna be a jack, a queen and a king. So you have three in each of the suits. So you've got 12 different ways that can happen. A spade, there are 13 spades. And when I take 12 times 13, I end up with 156. Okay, so how many ways um, can you pick a king, a heart, and then a five? Okay, a king a heart, and then a five, provided you put the cards back. Okay, so assuming we put the cards back, um, we're gonna have four different ways to get a king, 13 ways to get a heart, and um, for a five, there's four ways to get a five. So we're gonna have 16, four times four times 13. And we get 208 as our answer. Um, in how many different ways can a 10 question true false test be answered if every question must be answered? So if every question must be answered and it's true false, we've got two choices. That's gonna be two to the 10th power, okay? And so two to the 10th is 1,024. Now, if it's all right to leave an, something unanswered, so that means we have true, false, or blank. So basically we have three choices for each of the 10 questions. So um, for that one, I'm gonna take um, three to the 10th, which is 59,049. So you can see having that as an option really gives us many more situations. Um, suppose you have totally forgotten the combination of your locker. There are three numbers in the combination. Okay, so there's three numbers, one, two, three. You're sure that each number is different, so there's no repetition. The numbers on your locks dial range from zero to 35. So you gotta be careful. Zero to 35 is actually 36 choices, okay? If you test one combination every 12 seconds, how long in days to the nearest hundredth will it take to test all possible combinations? Well, first let's figure out all possible combinations. So there's gonna be 36 for the first one, then 35, 
then 34, which is really the same as 36 factorial over 33 factorial. Okay, so whichever way you want to type it in, they're both going to give us the same answer. Okay, so 36 factorial divided by 33 factorial gives us 42,840 different ways. Now, each of these is going to be 12 seconds. So we're going to take this and times it by 12. So when we times that by 12, we end up with 514,080 seconds. And we want to know um, how long will it take in days? So I'm going to take 514080 seconds. I'm going to divide it by um, 60 seconds to get minutes. So I'm going to divide it by, hold on. Let me um, I'm going to take this quantity this whole quantity okay which is that that five thousand one five hundred and fourteen thousand eighty. I'm going to divide it by sixty. And so that is going to be eight, five, six, eight minutes. I'm going to take eight, five, six, eight minutes and divide it by 60 minutes to get hours. Okay, so if I take this. And I am going to divide it by 60, which means I'm going to times it by 1 60th. That's going to give me um, 142.8 um, hours, hours. Okay, so this was seconds. I divided that my seconds by 60 to change it to minutes, divided my minutes by 60 to change it to hours. I'm going to take my hours, 142.8, hours and divide it by 24 hours to get days. So divide by 24 or basically I'm going to times it by one divided by 24 and I get 5.95 days. That's how long it's going to take. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully it helps you if you're struggling on fundamental counting principle.